Hello everyone and welcome to my contribution to this year's World Plone Day. What I'm planning to do is um, to give you all a small showcase of a couple of Volto blocks that have recently been open sourced by Kit Concept. So namely those are the Volto separator block, the button block and last but not least the carousel block. Um, first thing I want to do is uh, give you quick instructions on how to actually install those into your uh, Volto project um, by showing you how to set up a new Volto project using those add-ons. So we'll get up a terminal right here and we're gonna use the Volto generator to set up all the boilerplate we need for a new Volto project. So you use that if you have it installed um, by running yo at plone slash Volto. This will fire up this um, small generator dialog um, asking you for the project name first. In our case that will be World Clone Day. Enter. Next question is would you like to add any add-ons? And indeed we want to because that's that's why I'm here. Um, therefore we hit Y and enter and now we gotta type in the name of the add-on we want to use. In our case, the first one is the Volto separator block. I'm just gonna go ahead and copy that over into my terminal right here and confirm that with enter. Now we are getting asked if you want to add another add-on and indeed we want to. So therefore we go Y again, hit enter and get ourselves the name for the Volto button block add-on. Same again. So for our third add-on we'll again hit Y, hit enter, get ourselves the add-on name paste that, hit enter, and that's it. Now we've uh, confirmed all three add-ons we want to use. So um, in my case we don't want to add anything else, so we can just confirm by hitting enter. After a while this small dialog will pop up um, asking us to specify a version of a couple of those add-ons that we want to use as at least um, at time of recording there has only been one version released for each of those packages. Um, there's not much choice for you uh, and especially for me now. So I'll just confirm with enter, wait for the next add-on and go ahead enter. Now um, the generator will start to pull all necessary dependencies for us. This can take a while depending on your internet connection and um, the overall performance of your machine. So for um, to not let you wait any longer, I'll just pause the recording and see in a bit when the package pulling is done. Okay, welcome back. Um, after the installation process has finished, you'll see this screen, um, which means you can now just enter into your project, so into world plone day. Um, if you fire up your code editor in here, you will be able to um, open 
in the project's package JSON and in, the, in there you'll actually see the add-ons listed um, uh, in this row that we've just installed. You can just check here to make sure that you have everything that you want to. And this is also the place where you would uh, add a new add-on um, to your existing project. So if you do not start up uh, um, a new project from scratch installing the add-ons, you could also go ahead and just add them here into the add-ons column. All right, but what we now want to do is have a look on how those blocks actually work. So what I'm gonna do is um, start up my Volto front end. And as you can see here, I've already have a um, Clone 5 instance up and running in, uh, in a Docker container over here. Um, I'm not gonna get into how that works, but basically you, you can just use um, the pre-configured pre Plone Docker container with all the necessary dependencies to um, get your Plone backend up and running. So now that uh, our front-end server has started, we're gonna go ahead and access the instance in our browser on localhost 3000. And we're gonna get greeted by this nice page here. I've already created a bit of example content pages up here that we're gonna use later to um, show off some features of the blocks we have. So first block that we have is the separator block, which is a rather simple, very straightforward one. Basically, it's a line. Um, it's a line that you can add, that you can't configure, but that can come in just really handy if you have um, some content that needs to be separated from, from other content underneath, um, you can simply add the separator block down there and then put whatever content underneath it. Uh, and yeah, you can also move it around just like any other Volto block. Not much to say about it. Let's show you how, how it would look like if we save. Basically the same as an edit mode. Um, yeah, that's the first block. Not that exciting, but it'll, it'll get more interesting with the next one that we have. And that is the button block. The button block um, basically adds a button, what it says. So I'm a button. But what you can do with this button is um, use it as a hyperlink to what any whatever resource on the website you want to link to. So if I go and link to this lorem page and that will work with the button. We have a couple of configuration options for the button block. So we can align it to the left side, to the right side, keep it in the middle uh, as the default was, or just make it the big white button. Um, maybe best fit um, at the end of a longer paragraph. Um, in my case, we're going to get go, going to go ahead and align it to the left, save it, and if I now click the button as a user, I'll enter this page over here. Pretty straightforward to configure. 
not much you can do wrong with that um, but might come in handy for a couple of use cases and last but not least is the most interesting block in my opinion that we released is the carousel block so I'm gonna go ahead and edit again and add that new block down here it's a carousel what this does is basically um, a collection of uh, of teaser items that are displayed in a carousel manner we'll see what I mean by this in a second we'll just fill in those four teasers that we have here with content by uh, opening the object browser here and selecting some content from our page that we want to um, tease and, uh, on our landing page. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and do that for each content that we have. There we go. So in this basic configuration with four columns and um, four items to show, it's more or less just a static grid with four different items next to each other. It gets interesting if we start to play around with the number of items to show. If we reduce that to three, the carousel block will only show three items um, at one time and then work as, as a bit of a slider or as the name implies as a carousel um, from which you can have a selection of items. So we could also go ahead and only show two at a time and it'll automatically um, switch to the uh, correct content. Um, we have another configuration option down here, hiding the description. So if you don't like all that text, you can just um, hide that too. And also on the top here, we are able to modify any of those um, items that we added to the block. We can also, if we would want to just add another one here at, and, uh, in the last position, we could add my folder here that does not have a preview image yet, but um, also for that case, we have a solution because we can just go ahead and override the preview image. So we can go inside of my folder where, I have, where I've got a couple of uh, nice little pictures um, and let's get that one. Right. So now our carousel block consists of five separate items and is configured to always show two at once and we can also give it a small headline on a carousel, carousel block and in the end save it and for the user it'll work just as it did in the edit view with the difference that the linked content actually worked. So if I click on that, we'll actually get forwarded to that page. Um, yeah, I think that's it from my side. I hope you uh, enjoyed my little presentation and I wish you great fun with whatever presentation is next in line. Um, and hope to see you on whatever Plone event might come next. Goodbye.